support we've had from the, the members of the NUG across Scotland has been solid and it's been really gratifying as well to see many of our colleagues in Bechtu and, and folk who aren't members of, of any union take the decision not to cross our official picket line here today. Uh, I think at the last chapel meeting when we heard the results of the, the, the consultative ballots, um, which was a bit disappointed that Bechtu weren't going to come out, I think I said that this isn't where we wanted to be. But being here today and looking at all of you and seeing the unity that we've had within the NUJ across Scotland, I can definitely say this is where I want to be today. And I think we've got to remember why we are here today. We're here to defend the pensions, not just of NUJ members, but for people, BBC staff across the whole of the UK. We are here and united. We saw yesterday Helen Bowden's uh, remarks about the, the pensions deficit, which shows that the BBC management aren't united. We are here standing for, for fairness and justice for people across the whole of the BBC and they are standing for the decimation of the pensions of people who have given years of public service. So it's a great day to, to, to be out here and I'm really proud of, of the NUJ members, particularly in Scotland, for so first of all for the support they gave to the strike in the first instance, but second of all for the way that they stood firm under real pressure when it came to the consultative ballot. I'm really pleased to see everybody here today. So we've had support from NUJ members, we've had support today from Beg2 members, we've had support from BBC staff who aren't members of any union, and we've also had political support as well. And I'd really like to thank uh, Christine McElroy from the SNP for coming along here today. I'd like her to ask, uh, ask her to come and say a few words to us. Thanks very much. It's always um, a difficult thing when somebody says, say a few words, politicians, you know. Um, strikers, this strike today isn't about pay rises, it's not about perks, it's not about benefits, it's about fairness, it's about justice. And I think you're absolutely right to be striking today. And I've been doing a wee bit of research because Pete sent me some stuff and I've been doing a wee bit of research on some of the things. Nothing's going away, see that? Um, one of the things that really troubled me was to see that some of the senior executives within the BBC are not having any cap on their pension. There's people going to walk out with a £200,000 pension this year and next year and you guys are having to take the hit. And it seems to me that the current political climate with the banking crisis and the recession it seems to be the ordinary man that's taking the hit for this and that's something that really bothers me. Last week we took some evidence at the Equal Opportunities Committee on the welfare reforms and the changes coming to income support and housing benefits are going to be a disaster for ordinary working people and people who, through no fault of their own, can't get a job. And this, this strike is just synonymous with that. that the big high hegens make the mistakes and it's the ordinary man and woman in the street or in the workforce that has to pay for it. And I think that's completely wrong and completely unjust. Um, Jeremy Peat, I believe, told a meeting of active members in September that there wasn't an issue yet because you haven't got the evaluation. So if you've not got the evaluation, how do they know there's a deficit? And it, the actuary, um, what was her name again? Alison Blay. The actuary actually said the same thing. Now, see if the experts are saying, we don't need to do it now. You don't need to jump to a rash decision now. There's no um, rush to make a decision on this right now. Then why make the decision? And I can't see for the life of me why Mark Thomas would think he's a more an expert than an actuary. Um, I can't see that for a, a, a second either. Um, the other thing that, that sort of bothered me was the trustees. I looked at what the trustees did, and the trustees have basically just laid down and taken this. They've not stuck up for the members. They've not um, put their foot down and told the BBC, you know, look, we want to look, look at this properly, we want to look at the valuation. And I really think the trustees should look at themselves as well and think we should be working with our members and not for the organisation. Um, one of the other things that bothered me was that the experts told them last year that they could look at their assets and everything about offsetting some of this. And I know they've already stopped the, the final salary scheme, so pensions are going to get a bit cheaper. Um, but when the experts told them that they could look at the, the, the securities they've got to try and plug the gap, again the BBC walked away from that. Now why would they walk away from that? that? That's just not, it's no fair and it's something that I think you should fight, fight for um, quite clearly. Um, I, I definitely don't have all the answers. Politicians never have all the answers. We need people like you to tell us some of the answers as well. But I definitely don't have all the answers. But I'm here supporting you today. I think your fight is right. And I'll be continuing to support you here. I work very closely with Pete and Paul Hollering um, as the chair of the SNP's trade union group. And I'll be here to do whatever I can to support you in that. And hopefully um, get take, take this fight to the streets. 
take it to the members, take it to the BBC, and take it to the fat cats and say, £200,000 a pension just isn't right and the rest is are suffering. So keep up the good fight and I'm with you the whole way. Thanks very much, I really, really appreciate it. It's great to know that there's some political support for us out there as well. Um, we're going to turn now to uh, somebody you know, somebody I know, my president, your president, <laughs> our very own, Pete Murray. David, thanks very much. Christina, thanks again for coming along. And uh, the, the guy who was doing this job before me, James Dawkins, he's just turned up as well, past president of the NUJ. Um, I, this phone is full up with support messages, so I'm not even going to try and read them out, but I will try and read some of them. But there was a support message from another previous president of the NUJ, uh, Tim Lezard, who's on a sabbatical at the moment, and he phoned from the foot of Vesuvius to say <laughs> congratulations, thanks very much, and uh, all support from there. We, just so as you know, if we're talking globalised politics and globalised trade unionism, we think there is probably an NUJ picket on every continent today. We're here on the Scottish mainland for the first time an NUJ picket in Orkney, in Shetland. There will be a picket starting about now in Washington. There has been a picket outside the office in Beijing. There is a picket at the moment in Johannesburg, possibly also in Lagos, but I'm not sure about that. Uh, and there's a picket in Kabul because all the BBC staff, freelancers, whatever, who are working out there, putting their lives at risk to, to tell people what's going on in the Afghanistan war. They joined up en masse just a couple of days ago, joined us and they're all there with the NUJ so they're picketing as well. Uh, so, uh, Mark Thompson, Lucy Adams, all the others say that we're not representative. And if you, I only heard one Radio Scotland bulletin this morning at 7 o'clock read by Athol Duncan, our Head of News and Current Affairs, who really should know better, because he put our story about the strike, after a slew of stories that he pinched from the World Service, he put the story about the strike second bottom in the bulletin above the only Scottish story which was about a lollipop man retiring today. Because he thinks, and Lucy Adams thinks, the head, of, the head of personnel, and Mark Thompson thinks that we're not representative. Okay? Now, we in the NUJ represent more than 4,000 journalists inside the BBC. There are fewer than 5,000. We represent more than 4,000 of them. We represent about 85% of all journalists. And 100% of them are out on the street today right across the UK, right across the world in fact. So we are entirely representative and it's not just us because in amongst these messages I've got, I mean, I've got one message of support from Mark Sawatka, General Secretary of the PCS Union who represents about 300,000 people and he said we comprehensively support what you're doing, your fight is our fight. And uh, he and other uh, members of the PCS have said, if anyone goes to a PCS official from the BBC today and says, what is the news, can you tell us a story or whatever it is, they will refuse to talk to them. So it's no wonder that Athol Duncan and other news editors around the BBC don't know what's going on out here because nobody's going to talk to them. Because trade unionists, politicians, members of the public are saying they support us and not them. So, uh, I'll try and read out some more of these messages of support as we go through, but uh, we've got uh, Chair of the Unison Branch in South Lanarkshire, Stephen Smiley. Uh, various Beck 2 people have sent messages of support. Uh, in Newcastle, for example, uh, all the Beck 2 uh, camera crews, engineers, editors, all came in as a group at the same time came to the, the NUJ picket line and said, uh -uh, we're not crossing, and they all left. Um, we've got uh, Tom Harris, the, one of the local MPs, has just arrived, and I know we've got messages of support from other MPs as well. Uh, Anas Sarwar, 
the, the MP for this constituency here has just got off a plane from his work at the United Nations uh, and he's just got off the plane, he's not able to arrive but Pete's here, his, his, his assistant and Anas says he strongly supports what we're doing and he wants to stay informed about what's going on. So I think, I'll, I don't want to talk too much because I know it's getting cold but the key thing really is about information and about them knowing what really is going on. Because one of the key documents that I've seen over the last couple of days is that the, the email from Helen Bowden, which a lot of you will have heard about. Helen Bowden, apart from being head of news, is also one of the pension trustees. She knows a thing or two about pensions. And what she said was, it would be much, much better if the BBC just cancelled all of this for the moment and waited until there was a proper assessment, an official assessment of the size of the deficit. Uh, because Mark Thompson began all of this by saying the deficit's £2 billion and therefore we can't afford to pay the pension. And then when we balloted for industrial action, he said, oh, sorry, it's actually about a billion and a half pounds. That's still a lot of money, but it's a lot less than what he started out with. And now the estimates are that it's going to be a lot less than that again. It may even be a billion pounds. Now that is a lot of money, but it's a lot less than all of the calculations are based on. So when Lucy Adams on Five Live this morning on Scab Radio and Five Live said there is no more money in the pot, she needs telling. She needs to listen to the others. They don't know the numbers any more than any of us here know the numbers. And so they should wait until they get all of that. Wait until the trustees know the size of the deficit. Wait until the BBC knows the size of the deficit and we know the size of the deficit. And then we can talk about the proper numbers. And then they can have a deal on the pensions. But at the moment, they need to wait. And that's what we're saying. Wait and then we'll talk about it. And it's not just us, it's the pension trustees are saying that, and Bechtu are also saying that. Because they're saying if the deficit is less than £1.5 billion in March or April, then they will be back out here. They'll be on strike too. And so we can rest assured that we are representative. We know that we're speaking for a lot of people who have had to go in there to work today. We know that we're speaking for a lot of people in the BBC who don't have a voice. We're lucky. We're united. We're strong out here. We can speak up for ourselves. We're also speaking up for everybody in there and everybody in BBC offices all over the place. Because whatever we win, we're winning for everyone else. Thanks very much. So that's why we're out here, folks, today, because they're trying to sell us a pig and a poke, and we're no buying it. We heard from Christina earlier today, um, we've got political support from other people as well and I'm really pleased that Tom Harris MP has come along to show his support today and I'd like to Tom, ask Tom to come and say a few words. Uh, thanks very much. Um, it's a real honour to be invited to address an NUJ picket line. NUJ was the first union that I ever joined when I was at college doing journalism studies at Napier and I encouraged half of my class to join at the same time and I was a member, an active member for many years, rising, I have to say, to the heady heights of Deputy FOC at the Paisley Daily Express and I was very proud of my uh, activity and membership of the, of the NUJ. Look, I, I, I know that you're not really here today to listen to a political speech, so I'm going to cut this down to about 90 minutes with a break in the middle. Um, it's not a healthy situation when one political party is, is begins to be seen as uh, antipathetic to the BBC while another political party seems to be sympathetic. That's not healthy for democracy and that's not the way it should be. But this situation is not of our making. We have a Prime Minister who described cuts for the BBC as delicious and frankly they should stick in the throat of any government minister who sees cuts to such an amazing institution. High or, or, or decent pension provision is not the problem. Poor pension provision is the problem. And in this country, I think we're going to have to start getting our priorities right. It is no shame that people who work for any institution actually have a decent pension. That should not be the problem. We should be putting a lot more effort into identifying those people who have no pension at all, who have very poor pensions, and raise them up to the standard instead of bringing other people down to that level. I can assure you that there is a huge amount of concern in the parliamentary 
Labour Party and, and throughout Parliament for what's happening here at the BBC, both in terms of pensions, both in terms of a completely, utterly unnecessary freeze in the licence fee. And you have the support and the sympathy of many, many MPs and I promise you we will do everything we possibly can to support you in your efforts and I'm only glad that I wasn't invited today to take part in any BBC uh, radio or television production because I certainly would never have crossed this particular picket line. So thank you very much uh, for listening to me. Best of luck, as I say, if there's anything we can do, we will do whatever we can. Thank you. Thanks very much, Tom. That was great. Um, heard about Mr. Cameron's delicious cuts, and who knows what may be coming down the road later on. And that's another good reason why we are out here today. It's good to show that we are united and ready to defend ourselves, whatever comes our way in the months and years to come. That was a political support. We've also had support from other people within the trade union movement. I'd like to ask Dave Watson from the STUC to come along and say a few words to us. Thanks very much indeed, and I'll, I'll try and be brief, uh, but I did want to bring to you the best wishes, the greetings of the General Council of the STUC. It's 30 plus affiliated trade unions, it's 20 plus affiliated trade union councils, and to say to you that as this um, uh, struggle that you're having develops, um, that support will be more than just words, it'll be whatever support that we are um, able to give uh, to you, and to say to you that every single media outlet, bar one, uh, will be used in the um, attempt to uh, to win your uh, win the argument um, for you uh, today, our um, staff today have been uh, uh, instructed um, not only, obviously, not to cross this picket line, but that if the BBC uh, come online to us uh, today, then nobody will be available to talk to them, and nobody will be available to talk to them uh, at any moment that you are um, uh, staffing uh, a picket line here or anywhere else. I was um, outside a. a, a a picket line at Queen Margaret Drive some years ago um, when um, uh, an array of speakers, one after the other in fact, uh, stated that the news programs, the news programming on that morning was playing reruns of tired old uh, documentaries over and over again because the uh, news desk wasn't being properly staffed because of the effectiveness of the strike and between the cheers that I heard, a certain Bob Wiley's face darkened and darkened every time, if people don't remember Bob Wiley, I'm sure you do, reporter on BBC. His favour darkened, his face darkened and darkened every time that reference was made because it was indeed one of his programmes that was playing uh, um, hour in, hour out on the BBC. And I know today because lots of people have told me that the programming is being noticed or the lack of, and that means that this strike is beginning to bite and that means it is beginning uh, to be um, effective. And I just want to say one additional thing because I brought to you the support of the STU. You see? I'm sure Bob Wiley out there is uh, rooting for you um, too. Um, I want to say that this is about your pensions, but it's actually more about than about your pensions. It's about the service that you provide. Because just as we say that properly paid nurses are need, need to deliver properly paid health, and just as we say that properly paid local authority workers are needed uh, to produce proper um, uh, services at council level, so properly remunerated, properly rewarded BBC staff are needed to produce the kind of service that we expect from the British Broadcasting Corporation. So this is about your terms and conditions, it is about your pensions, but it's also about the service you provide. And that's why I think we can build a movement in support of you, not just amongst the trade union movement, but amongst the uh, broader public. And uh, I commit the SDUC and the trade union movement in Scotland um, in working to deliver that with you. Thanks very much. Dave, thanks very much. It's good to know that there's that wider trade union support here for us today. And while we're on the subject of trade union support, we've got, uh, obviously, Pete's predecessor as president of the NUJ here, James Doherty, today. We've also got my predecessor as the FOC for the BBC in Glasgow and Edinburgh, it's Stephen Lowe, who obviously now works for Unison, and uh, he's going to say a few words as well. Uh, I'm, I'm really here actually to congratulate you on the sterling work you're doing for my pension. Thank you. Um, and uh, it was really happening here for Pete there that there are picket lines on every continent, in, including here in Antarctica, obviously. But listen to, and well, we've proved one thing, if nothing, today, which is 
your bosses can't do your job. I mean, anybody that's watched or, or listened to the output today, that's really been absolutely clear. And actually, if you can't negotiate properly with your workforce and persuade them to come in, which is your job as a manager, you're not actually doing your own job very well. I, 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 it's fashionable to refer to people as ginger rodents, I believe. And, but it would be unfair to discuss Mark Thompson as being a ginger rodent. He might behave like a weasel, but he is in fact a balding ginger rodent. And, and I don't think we should forget that. But this is, I mean, this is a, a very serious issue for all of our pensions. But the divide in pension provision in this country is not actually between public and private. The average uh, public sector pension, well, the average local government pension, is about £3,800 a year. The average occupational pension scheme in the private sector is about £4,200 a year. None of these are fantastic sums of money. However, FTSE 100 directors can retire at 60 on final salary pension schemes that by and large are about 55% of their salary. That salary will be well into six figures. Just like Mark Thompson, Mark Byford, you're all missing him, I can tell. It's a, the, the real pension divide is between rich and poor and the kind of policies that are getting punted by government and by management in the BBC are aimed at increasing that divide and anything that can be done to narrow it is obviously good for everybody. And uh, I suspect this won't be the only picket line I'm on.